Right, let's talk experimental physics today. On this channel, we often discuss various interesting laws of physics, but we usually stick to the theoretical side of things. Not today, however, because we are going to flip the script. After all, in the world of physics, experimental evidence is the most important thing. Doesn't matter how cool or interesting or beautiful your theory is, if experimental evidence goes against it, then unfortunately it's going to have to be tweaked or thrown away entirely. I want to talk about a really useful trick that experimentalists have up their sleeve that they use to analyze an experiment they happen to be conducting. If you enjoy this video, then please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel for more fun physics content. If you'd like to support me on Patreon, then check it out at patreon.com forward slash path G. But anyway, let's get into the video. Now let's start by assuming that we are conducting some sort of experiment. And we're conducting this experiment in order to figure out whether two quantities are related to each other. Specifically, we're trying to find out whether the two quantities are directly proportional to each other. For example, we could be trying to show that the force exerted by a spring is directly proportional to the extension of the spring, or we could be trying to measure the current through a resistor as we change the voltage across it. In both cases, classical physics tells us that there's a direct proportionality relationship. F is proportional to X in the first case, and V is proportional to I in the second case, assuming we've got an actual resistor and not like a diode or something. But we're conducting this experiment in order to verify whether or not this is true. We expect in both cases that if one quantity is doubled, the other quantity doubles as well, and if one quantity is trebled, the other trebles as well, and so on. That's what we mean by direct proportionality. So we take some experimental measurements and we plot them on a graph. Now often they won't be in a perfect straight line for various reasons, random error being one of them, and it's possible that the way that we're conducting this experiment isn't quite perfect either. But on the whole, we should be able to take the data that we've gathered from our experiment and plot a straight line of best fit. Doing so will allow us to confirm that the two quantities that we were measuring are indeed proportional to each other, or our experimental results could tell us the exact opposite. For example, instead of a resistor, if we had a diode in our circuit, then our current versus potential difference graph would look like this. We're not fitting a straight line to that anytime soon. In this case, we can clearly say that V is not proportional to I, and this is relatively easily done. We can either confirm or deny our hypothesis based on the experimental results. But let's say we're now working with two generic quantities A and B, and we're not necessarily trying to show that A is directly proportional to B. Maybe we're trying to show A is proportional to B squared, or maybe B cubed. In that situation, there's a few different things we can do. The most basic one is to just plot A against B, and then to try and fit a curve of B squared or B cubed, depending on what theory tells us, to our data. This is highly problematic, because we have to make assumptions about the proportionality constant, and we have to try and fit different curves to data that isn't perfect. So we need a slightly better approach. What about if we tried to plot A against B squared, for example, or A against B cubed, depending on, again, what the theory tells us? This works slightly better, because if the theory tells us A is proportional to B squared, and we can plot a straight line when we've plotted A against B squared, then this sort of tells us that the relationship we're looking for is the correct one. But there's a much better way to do this, and once again it involves plotting what will be a straight line. And that, by the way, is the key to this whole video. Plotting a straight line is so much better than plotting a curve. This is something that we often learn at high school, and experimentalists continue this into their research, just with a few stronger mathematical tools up their sleeve. So let's talk about this one particular method that's used that's cleaner, simpler, and just, just better, frankly. To do this, let's first assume that theory tells us that we are trying to verify the relationship A is equal to 5B squared. So in this case, A is proportional to B squared and the proportionality constant is 5. And we're trying to conduct an experiment in order to verify whether the values of 5 for the proportionality constant and 2 for the power are reasonable. And we go about, as usual, conducting our experiment and take our values of B and A. In this case, B is the independent variable and A is the variable that depends on B. Here's the thing. We have all the data we need at this point in order to work out what the actual value of the proportionality constant is and what the actual value of the power is if we use logarithms. Before we go any further, if you're not familiar with logarithms, there'll be some resources in the description below. Definitely do check those out. Remember that we're trying to verify what the values of the proportionality constant and the power are. Theory tells us one thing, but it may or may not be true. So let's just say that the proportionality constant that we'll find from the data that we've gathered is theta. And let's say that the power that we'll find is gamma. We are verifying the relationship A is equal to theta B to the power of gamma. By the way, hopefully the colors will be helpful in tracking what each term means, so keep an eye out on those. Let's now take logarithms of both sides of this equation. 
So for simplicity, I'll be using the natural log ln, or ln as some people like to call it. And when we do take natural logarithms of both sides, we find that the log of a is equal to the log of theta b to the power of gamma. Now on the right hand side, we've got this juicy multi-component term, and we can use the rules of logarithms to break this up a little bit. Specifically, we can remember that the logarithm of a product of two quantities is equal to the logarithm of the first quantity plus the logarithm of the second quantity. And so we can write the right hand side as the natural log of theta plus the natural log of b to the power of gamma. Then we can remember another logarithm rule, which is that the logarithm of a quantity to some power is equal to that power multiplied by the log of that quantity, which means we can write the natural log of b to the power of gamma as gamma multiplied by the natural log of b. And at this point, we've done some mathematical manipulation. So what? Well, if you look closely at the equation we've got so far, you might be able to spot a slight similarity with the equation of a straight line. Now in the UK, the equation of a straight line is most commonly written as y is equal to mx plus c, where y is the variable plotted on the vertical axis, x is the variable plotted on the horizontal axis, m is the gradient or slope of the straight line, and c is the constant often known as the y-intercept, the intercept along the vertical axis. And so by taking logarithms, we are able to plot a straight line if we plot the natural log of a on the vertical axis and the natural log of b on the horizontal axis, instead of plotting a against b or a against b squared or a against b cubed. There is a huge benefit to doing this because as soon as we've plotted the natural log of a against the natural log of b, so this is what our data points would look like if we did that, we can use linear regression to plot a line of best fit. Now, linear regression is a little bit complicated, but essentially what it tells us is the best straight line to plot for this data, because this is the line that minimizes the average distance between the points that we've gathered from our experiment and the straight line itself. In other words, this straight line is the best straight line representation of our data. But the important thing is that when we've plotted the line of best fit for this particular graph, the gradient or slope of this graph directly gives us the power that we were trying to verify. It gives us gamma. And the vertical axis intercept for this straight line is actually equal to the natural log of theta, which was our constant of proportionality. So by taking logarithms and plotting the logarithm of the dependent variable against the logarithm of the independent variable, we are able to find the values of theta and gamma, the constant of proportionality and the power. And for all we know, this power could be like 2.5 or a non-integer value. And at this point, we can see why this method is so powerful. It gives us a very good value for the power, whereas previously we would have had to make a plot and guess what power to plot, whether we plot a against b squared or a against b cubed or a against b to the power of 2.713456. And then we still wouldn't know if this data was the best that we could get in plotting a straight line relationship. Using logarithms just gives us these values and we can then see how close they were to our theoretical predictions. Remember that in this case, our theory told us that a was equal to 5b squared. And we can see just how close theta is to 5, and we can see how close gamma is to 2. If those values are close enough, our theory is fine. If those values are not close, then we need to tweak it a little bit, either by changing the constant of proportionality if theta is too different, or by changing the power if gamma is too different. And here's the other thing. If we cannot even plot a straight line after we've plotted ln a against ln b, then we know that it's not a power law relationship. In other words, a is not proportional to b to some power. It could be proportional to like sine of b or something like that. So just to recap, if you want to verify some sort of power law relationship, a is proportional to b to some power, then take logarithms because you can easily find the power and the constant of proportionality. So I've shown you a very specific way to verify a power law relationship. But the important takeaway from this video should be that you should always try and plot a straight line if you possibly can. Straight lines are just easier to deal with, they're more friendly. That, that's what it is. Anyway, if you enjoyed this little look into the mind of an experimentalist and it didn't scare you too much, then please hit the thumbs up button on this video and subscribe to my channel for more fun physics content. Hit the bell button if you want to be notified when I upload and do check out my Patreon page where I upload video solutions to worksheets that accompany my videos. Having said that, I realize I haven't made that many worksheets recently, but they are making a comeback. I've just been super, super busy. And I do want to thank you all for your support as always. I really appreciate it. With all of that being said, I will see you really soon.